your lecture last night was fantastic. Thank you. So what I got from it is everywhere I go, I try to find something that reminds me of home. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So how do the portraits of the women correlate to that idea? I understand that it's a, like a creative nonfiction narrative. Well, it's, I mean, art is, you know, fiction is a way to tell the truth, you know. And, um, uh, and I think that... Um, where that, how that fits into it is because, I mean, like the people, well, there's actually, you were, we were just speaking about Freud, and, um, uh, and one of the things that I find fascinating and, and is interesting is that there's a model that I work with a lot named Christina, and, um, um, and she incidentally looks like almost exactly like my mother when my mother was like in her 20s, which is really kind of strange. Like when I put the pictures together, in fact, in my book, there, uh, there's a, uh, on one of the spread, the spread of my family, there's actually like a picture of my mom, and then there's a picture of Christina that's thrown in there just as like a little like tongue-in-cheek thing, but like uh, it's actually like, it looks like a, you'd think it was my mom, but it's actually not. It's actually the real Christina, you know, with no makeup and no hair and no, none of the artifice that we employ in the other pictures. This is just like the real person, like with a flash, on a camera, just like my picture of my mother. There's a picture of my mom with her flat, with a flash on a camera, you know. Um, that is, I, I, you know, and then so that's an interesting thing. It's like, well, well, where? So do I do I find things that remind me of home? Yeah, I do that with people too. Like I, I meant that in terms of like, you know, that everything kind of like is sort of like reminds me of the past in some way. And I think that, um, you know, is that like. Um, and I don't consciously like set out and say, oh, gee, does this remind me of the past? It's like, no. It's, just like an I, it's, a, it's an unconscious act, exactly. Like Somebody had asked in my lecture, um, you know, how do you foresee, you know, that the, 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 there was a one-dimensionality in the characters that the women played in my work, you know, and then, and, you know, my answer to that was that, you know, well, that's what I've known. I mean, you know, is, well, no, not one woman, but one one of these, I mean, if I revert back to like that childhood memory of like these, uh, of the people in my work, the characters in my work, like there was one dimension to them, you know, and that's what is being portrayed in my work oftentimes. Um, now, however, that doesn't necessarily mean that's always going to be that case because you're sort of like, I think when you're working with your own personal history, you know, which is sometimes there, and then sometimes, of course, you know, we should, and we'll talk about this in a minute, about making work that has to do with other people's histories, you know, that you've seen. You haven't lived it, but you see it. Um, that's another story, but like, in that's terms... of like the ambiguity comes Yeah. From. I actually just recently, like last week, I photographed this thing for a magazine um, that was needed to have two people in the pictures, and it's sort of reminded me of why I don't do this very often because it's really it's 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 um it's not that I'm not capable of like you know juggling those two emotional people and making a picture out of it sometimes it's really cool but like I realized that almost with like your classmate here where she was talking about you know there's it's pleasurable it's interesting to like make these to engage in a human being and make photographs of them, and you're communicating, and you're almost, it's almost like you're having a dance, yeah. you know, because there's a, there's a back and forth that happens between people when you're, when you're making art, and, and sometimes it's hard, it, like, like, to share that with two people at the same time is, it doesn't work sometimes, you know, so therefore I, I always usually have one person in the frame, you know, that I'm focusing on, you know. There's something about having people look at the camera, um, that I've been that I've enjoyed, you know. I like that because it's very direct, you know. It's like unflinching. It's like staring at somebody, you know. And I think that um, that's a curious thing to do. And then, um, but one thing that has um, that I'm excited about that's changed a little bit is that, and I'm, it's something I'm exploring. I mean, you know, the work that you guys in that book that we're talking about, like. You know, I finished that work like over a year ago. You know, there's no pictures of me, and they were all like done. And, um, um, and so I've obviously moved on to other things already. And one of the things that I am working on next is, um, is, of, is a, a, a book of this model that I work with a lot named Christina. And, um, and it's curious to see how 
when you, oh, and then it also has no places in it. I don't think, I think it's going to be just her, and that's it. No place, like just the pictures of her. And so when you have that and, you can, and you're not, you can't rely on the, the, the landscapes to convey a mood, that just has to be in the picture. Um, and then obviously if I had a book of all the same emotions coming out of the same person, it would just be deadly boring. You know? Therefore, it forces me to like, explore other avenues. You know? You know, it's funny, the people I've been working with lately have been, um, a lot of them have been more like um, professionals and like they're people that, that photograph literally every day. And we just have a, an engagement where like, we just like, um, we, we, oh, it's almost like we don't even have to talk about stuff. Like we just look at wardrobe things um, that they brought. They usually just spread out what they brought on, the, on, you know, on a table and we look at it and decide what we're gonna wear and, and then maybe I, I would have something, uh, you know, in my prop archive that they would, you know, would try that. Um, and um, we just kind of go through what we're gonna like wear, and then um, and then we just you know start making pictures. You know, like I will say this right now is like to assume that the photographer is the one with the power is uh, you know is a, a, a foolish mistake. You know, the model, especially the models that I work with, like they're like they are well, number one, um, you know, almost like for like many for many years now, everybody I photographed is, has sought me out. Like they've asked me to take their picture, so that's number one. And then number two, um, they, um, you know, they are, re they're there, they are there, you know, for a reason. And then, and then most of the people they work with, they get paid, but they don't. We don't exchange any money, you know. Or, then there was one particular um, story that I had. Um, there was one particular case that I had where it was like really crystal clear. Oh, this is what's happening is that um, there was somebody that I wanted to, there was somebody that I was gonna photograph, and then I found out that like, they lived over an hour away from where I lived. And I used it, it just didn't have the time to drive all the way down there and you know, get a place to photograph in and all that stuff. And then, so I basically had, um, I told her, I said, I said, I don't really think I can do it. Like I just don't have the time to like do it. And she's like, well, what if I like take care of all the details and you just have to show up? You know, I'll be, I'll, I'll rent a place where we can photograph, I'll be there, you know, like, we, and we can start immediately, you know. And, um, and I was like, well, I guess if you put it that way, okay, that's fine, you know, because that takes a long time to get all that stuff together. And so I went there and basically, you know, and the picture is in my book. It's the picture, it's probably the most provocative picture in the book or the one for me that is like kind of the scariest one where it's like, it's a young woman lying on a bed and she took off all of her clothes and set them right next to her and she's like lying on her back and she's at a very awkward angle looking straight into the camera, you know, and um, it's a very, um, you know, intense picture. Like, and in fact, it was so intense that when I first printed it, I literally had it like, I put it in a little frame and I was like, oh, this is just really intense. And I put it in my closet, it was there for like literally years, you know, because I was just like, oh, I'm not ready for this picture. This picture could be so easily misread uh, as like me being like, uh, you know, putting somebody in this really scary position when in fact she was the one that did it herself. And, um, um, and so basically, and so what is I believe going on in that picture, and I think this is happening in a lot of the photographs, but just on a lower level, this was like heightened level of this. It's like where it's called, re, Freud calls it remastering. And then, or, you know, Dr. Drew calls it, um, you know, um, it doesn't have a name for it, but it's just like, you know, sources of trauma in childhood become sources of attraction in adulthood. And, um, and basically, and the, and the reason that is is because they, you know, if you can, if you create an experience where you can control the outcome of that experience, where it was previously an experience that you were couldn't control, and it was a bad experience for you. So, if you can replay this experience and then control the outcome, then you can therefore overcome, you know, or or maybe feel differently about it and change the way you feel about that. And um, and that I believe is happening. I know that was happening in that one. I think it happens on a lot of the pictures. I think that, you know, why do people consciously come over to me and many other photographers to have them, the, to photograph them themselves naked? Why? 
like what's the story going on there? And so there has like, to be some. There's something, yeah, there's something that's that. occurring probably between both of us, you know, because like I, you know, I saw lots of things I probably shouldn't have seen when I was a kid, you know, that were inappropriate for like a boy to see, you know, because I lived in a kind of complicated and chaotic household and, you know, and it's not like anything that's like super conscious, it's just like, but I know what's going on and I'm not afraid of that, you know, I'm like, I am just let it happen, you know, which is, I think, good. But I'm sure with models, I know that there's something going on. There's, it's a two-way street, you know, and it's not, it's not that old, tired trope where, like, the male gaze is, like, taking from the woman. Like, that's bullshit. I mean, like, the women are there because they came, because they want to be put and seen in that position. Like, you know, that is for real going on. You know, and, and, and it's old thinking to, like, discount the fact that they are, oh, and they're not on drugs, they're not like junkies, and they're not doing it for money. Yeah. Like, they don't have to do it. Why are they there? Yeah. 